The Israel-Palestinian conflict is the ongoing struggle between the Israelis and Palestinians that began in the early 20th century. The conflict is over who has control over Jerusalem and the surrounding area. An early United Nations plan to give each group a part of the land failed, and Israel and the surrounding Arab nations fought for several wars over the territory. Many people will say that the two-state solution will solve these problems, but it will create more problems than it solves. It is time for this conflict to end. Too many lives have been lost, there has been too much destruction of land, and it is time for the Israeli and Palestinians to live in peace. But the biggest question remains. What is the best option for control over this land? The Israel-Palestine conflict is an altercation between the Palestinians and the Israelis that started in the early 1900s. Around this time, Israel and Palestine were part of the Ottoman Empire and peace was mostly found throughout the region. This would change when an uprising came from the Zionist movement which said that Judaism is not only a religion but a nationality and to escape the hate, the people believed they should become a state of their own. After World War I, the Ottoman Empire collapsed, allowing the British to carve up and take control of the Palestine-Israel area. Soon after, Britain let go of the area and it became independent under the UN plan, which split it into two separate states. Though a war began and Israel claimed most of the territory that was supposed to be Palestine's. Since then, this pretinct has been filled with war and chaos. Tens have died and it has been obvious that something needs to change. The way to fix this that is best and most viable is the two-state solution. The two-state solution is an idea that would break up Israel and Palestine into two separate states. This solution is superior to the one-state solution in feasibility. The one-state solution suggests making a single state for this whole region. My, team's, my team thinks this won't work and it won't form the unity we want the people to have. The one-state solution will force people who have had conflicts, conflict against each other for years to become a single country. This will make the Jews a minority and it will destroy the Zionist movement. Furthermore, the one state solution has been being used so far and it has made nothing better in the conflict. This solution will also be extremely hard to convince the Israeli government to agree on. On the other hand, the two state solution helps both sides and it will restore harmony for the people of the Israel-Palestine area. It may be a difficult and long process but life isn't easy, and to stop the conflict, we need to do something that will work best. I will like, would like to end this statement with a vision. Two states living side by side without war and death. Two states living together, forming a perfect union without fighting. Two states named Israel and Palestine. As the famous scholar Albert Einstein once said, peace cannot be kept by force, it can only be achieved by understanding. Thank you. The Israel-Palestine conflict has been an ongoing disagreement that wreaked havoc for over 80 years. The solution I feel is most viable is to split Israel and Palestine into two separate states so peace and unity can finally be heard throughout this region. A prominent problem that always comes up when talking about this topic is Jerusalem. Jerusalem, which is the capital of Israel, is a holy city of three of the main Abrahamic religions. The two-state solution will support both states by allowing travel into and out of the city. The way this could be possible is by having border control that will allow people into the city no matter if they are from Israel or Palestine. The city will be a self-governing sanction under control of both of the states. Furthermore, a peace treaty could be made to pre protect the harmony between the two states. So you mentioned that in a two-state solution, um, there would be border control to let both Israelis and Palestinians um, into Jerusalem. You would be able to achieve this in one state, and uh, there are downsides to the two-state solution and upsides to the one-state solution other than what you just said. One, um, if, both, if it's going to be governed by bo independently and by both states, as you said, um, then there will often be a struggle for power between terrorist groups and ind independent groups in in those two states fighting over Jerusalem, even though the two governments will say that they both own it uh, together. Um, and when in one state, there will be better uh, better security because the um, because there's government by one government instead of having disagreements over policies for and different ways that they would handle um, uh, handle problems in Jerusalem.
You say there's going to be um, security issues and policy issues, but Jerusalem is going to be very similar to Vatican City. It's its own place, but it's governed by both of the states and even the UN or other international companies could help it be itself. Like, it's not going to have security issues because it's not going to have to, there's not going to be a struggle of power. The power is just going to be owned by all three of them. And there's going to be peace treaties made so that there is no struggle and that they won't have to fight over who controls it. It's just its own place. It's a self-governing sanction. So you mentioned that uh, Jerusalem would be like Vatican City, but the difference is Vatican City doesn't have any religious religious disagreements or uh, terrorist organizations there. And also, like, what what would work for one place would not work for another. There's major differences between Vatican City and Jerusalem, so now every solution would work in every place. There are several massive upsides to a one-state solution regarding the border. Obviously, the main one is that there are fewer disagreements. In a two-state solution, there would be several disadvantages. One, every state or country that is part of the UN would have to agree on the new borders, as I am assuming this would be a UN proposed border resolution. The likelihood of the majority of the countries agreeing would be slim. With a one-state solution, there would be no need for a border agreement because there, because there would be no need for new borders to be drawn up. Another problem is that with the new borders, the plan would be pushing residents out of their homes due to border changes, causing large amounts of immigration refugees and considering the number of problems this area is already facing, most likely a humanitarian crisis of some sort. This would be much more manageable in a one state solution. The final problem I would be mentioning right now is that there would need to be a whole new plan drawn up because the old one, UN resolution number 181, has several flaws. For example, it has no regard to the creation of a Palestinian state. And this is a direct quote, quote from gcpa.org. According to the UN Charter, General Assembly resolutions are simply recommendations and are not legally binding. Thus, Resolution 181 cannot in any manner be considered to be a basis for the Palestinian claim to statehood. So, Jay or Willem, what are your solutions to these problems I mentioned? This is round two, and this is the response. You said that the UN will decide on the borders and will have a great part in it, but it's really up to the two states. The two states have a full decision on what the borders will be, and the UN will just support their decision and will help them guide them through what they should decide. Now, my proposal leaves the 1949 to 1967 borders, which leaves the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, which is this one. And that will be the most the best borders to decide on because it leaves Palestinians with the area that they had for 18 years in the 1900s and will have the best chance of bringing peace to the area. Okay, so <laughs> you mentioned how like the two different states would decide on the borders, but there would be many disagreements because um, since they're different religions and stuff like that, um, there would be disagreements on because maybe some one state would want more land and then the other state would disagree with that or stuff like that. And you also um, didn't answer the question about the refugees, like, uh, yeah. In the present day, Israel and Palestine are a two-state solution at the time, but it is created and it's been the Swiss cheese effect where Israel has been carving out parts of Palestine, but leaving the borders in the 1949 to 1967 will leave the two states separate and will give Palestine the land that they've wanted for many years and keep their own independence from the two countries while still having unity between the borders. Security is a significant concern in the Israel-Palestine conflict. Israel was sought to be created under the Zionist movement, which was supposed to make a Jewish state and a safe haven for Jews who have faced years of oppression. The Israelis have fought many wars and on many occasions were fighting for their own survival. Terrorism is very present in the Israel-Palestine area and many have died. If the one state solution was used, the Palestinians and Israelis would live together posing huge security threats. 
Terrorism and death rates would most likely increase because of this solution. The one state solution suggests putting together these people who have been fighting against each other for more than 80 years, which would most likely cause lots of violence in war. Contrary to this, there are many ways to protect the people of both states under the two-state solution. The two-state solution is a win-win for both sides and it will meet both of their needs. Some ideas the two-state solution could work with are trying to enact a peace treaty, border control and security checkpoints, limiting gun laws, building a layered defense system for both states, or having coordination between the states that could help them live peacefully. Um, you said that in the one state solution, there will be more terrorism because um, the two groups are in the same state. And yes, I agree that will rise um, rates of terrorism. But also in the two state solution in Jerusalem, if it's an independent state, then uh, terrorist groups may want to fight for their religion and try to get to it and try to take control of it, which will also increase terrorism in the area in the two-state solution. Um, and another major problem with the two-state solution uh, is that crimes, riots, and infrastructure damage that happen on the border or mig uh, that happen on the border or migrate across the border would require both security forces working on the problem and possibly the UN's forces as well if it is in the Jeru Jerusalem area. This could lead to Palestinian police and soldiers attacking Israel police and soldiers, and vice versa. This would not be good at all, as it could lead to further attacks, disagreements, and infrastructural damage. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm, we're going to cut um, that part out. Hold on one sec. <coughs> Camera ran out of call. Go ahead. Another problem is that border control would have problems. Then the refu what, If the border control would have problems, then the refugees would be able to stay in a safe shelter because there would be no more problems on which state would go, uh, in which state they would go to in the one state solution. Um, and I have one more question for you. So how would you address the two, um, how would you address the two police forces and security forces working together when uh, terrorist groups and criminals could easily incite violence ag against the two states? Round three, first rebuttal. In the beginning, you said that there will be no more violence with the one state solution, but in the beginning of your rebuttal right there, you just said how there will be more terrorism because they're mixing the two crowds together. That will in increase the terrorism rates and it will increase deaths in the overall. The two state solution is the only solution that will ensure some sense of protection for both states. Well, the one state solution will result in guaranteed violence and war, which we don't want, as you said. And as the A security system for the two state solution article shows, there are multiple ways to handle the security issue. Under a two state solution, there will be significant upgrades to security systems and infrastructure. By building operation centers and data sharing systems for both states, utmost situational cognizance for Israelis, but minimal intrusion on Palestinian so sovereignty can be achieved which will lower death rates and peace will still be kept at the hands of both the states. You also talked about how the refugees and how there will be mixing of the two different police authorities. So the authorities will, they won't be mixing that much because they each have their own state. So one side will be on, one will be on one side, one side will be the other. And the UN and the US and maybe some other countries that border with them will help. He also talked about how refugees will not know where to go, even though they will, because they just want to return to their home place from which they were removed from. Uh, responding to Willem, we never said that there would be no violence in a one state solution, because even in the most developed countries, there's still violence and you can't do anything about that. Um, also, when you said that the, uh, Jay, when you said that the states will control the crime that's in the area and there wouldn't need to be like uh, them working together because it's in the one area. Say a, um, a riot or, uh, say, yeah, say a riot is crossing the border from one from uh, one state into another or into Jerusalem or any other combination that you can think. Then they would need to work together and it could easily incite violence between the two states. Settlements would be much easier to manage in a one-state solution. In fact, there would be almost no issue at all. 
Despite having to solve issues with homelessness, building code, zoning, which are things that every country has to deal with, in areas such as the Gaza Strip, there isn't much that would have to be done in a one-state solution. In a two-state solution, however, there would have to be a lot, a lot of work done due to the people displaced when the borders change. This will call, cause four major pro problems. One, there will have to be services that these displaced homeowners should be able to access in order for them to register for a new home and leave their old home. The second issue is that they would have they would is that there would have to be somewhere for these displaced families and homeowners to stay while we wait for while they wait for their new residences and legal issues to be sorted out. And third, there would need to be a there would need to be more homes built and given to the people who need them. This the fourth and final problem is that there would have there would need to be a funding for these homes, shelters, and services. Funding could come from the UN, which, but there would most likely be disagreements as to who gets how much. Failure occurring in any of these steps would be disastrous, and, and it, so it begs the question: What are your solutions to these problems, and how would, and how would these necessary steps be protected from failure? Under the Land for Peace formula kept in the UN Security Council Resolutions 242 and 338, Israel has to remove the territories it gains in 1967 to create full peace. This plan has an excellent chance of bringing harmony to the area. Moving settlements would create clear boundaries for the two countries. Over time, these settlements have become from Israel claiming land without any sort of permission from Palestine. This makes the settlements in the West Bank and in other places illegal and withdrawing from them would aid Palestinians in lots of ways. Okay, so you never answered the questions, of, like the four major problems, about like where the homeowners that are in the two different states would go, or the one state would go, um, and yeah. As you said, countries handle many problems, so the problems that you listed will have to be handled by the two states. You're acting like these problems won't be fixed, but they will, because every country has to handle homelessness and problem in those types of problems. So Israel can handle these problems with the help of the UN. You have to keep in mind that all of these settlements are illegal. It is Israel claiming land that they weren't given permission to? And if they were given lots of areas that they could stay for homeless shelters, like you said, and get humanitarian aid, this it, this is giving aid to people that have created illegal settlements in places they were not given permission and that they should be removed. In the 1948 Arab-Israeli War, tons of Palestinians were displaced. Now millions of Palestinians live in refugee camps around the region. Under the two-state solution, the right to return for the Palestinian refugees would have to be decided by the state leaders. The two-state solution offers lots of flexibility, so Israel and Palestine get to decide how they will handle the refugee situation. Although, in my team's opinion, the refugees should be allowed to return or at least be compensated for the ethnic cleansing that happened. Palestinian refugees' right to return to the homes from which they were shifted from is, is justified in international law. The UN General Assembly Resolution 194 in Article 13 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights says that the refu says that refugees should absolutely be granted a right of return to dwell at peace where they used to live or obtain some type of compensation. Hence the reason I believe the refugees' right to return should be provided. Either solution, both will struggle on this problem, but the two-state solution will make the situation better. Under the two-state solution, each state governs itself, so they have the choice to decide on how they will handle the refugee dilemma. On the under ha other hand, if the one-state solution was utilized, there would have to be a unified decision which would make the verdict on the problem much more complex and it would most likely take much longer. So you said that in the two-state solution, um, the refugees that are living in the camps, that the two states would be able to decide what they want to do with it, and because they are independent states, they can say what they want without having to work together. But what if the problem with that is that saying that they don't want them to come back for any reason 
for any reason. Um, if the two, if either of the states say that they don't want them to come back, and they're sending their refugees to the other state, that could cause disagreements. Um, and this has happened before. Um, this has happened before where refugees are going to a country and they can't go there for some reason, and so they send them back. And it creates this disagreement and humanita humanitarian crisis. Also, you said that in a one-state solution, in order for this refugee problem to um, be solved, you said there had to be a unified decision, but you never clarified what that unified decision had to be about. Also, um, in a one-state solution, it would be much like easier because there wouldn't really be have to be a decision between which state they go to. They can just stay where they are because it's one state. And yeah, you described a very rare situation that may have happened before, but you also didn't give any examples so that I could that I so I could know if this is like something that is common. And if the refugees were to fly or go to Israel to go back to their homes because it's in international law that they should be allowed to be, they wouldn't be sent back because if they went in the first place, they would know that they're allowed to. Israel has to make a decision if they're gonna let the refugees come back and live where they are or if they're not going to be. And if they make this decision that they're not going to be, the refugees wouldn't go there in the first place. Um, I said there would be a uni unified decision because the two states are going to be working together under a one state solution. So they'd have to decide together if they're gonna let the refugees return or if they're not going to be. And this could be very chaotic because one side may think one thing and the other side may think the other thing. Um, so Jay, you, when I said that um, it's happened before where two countries are sending the refugees back and forth because they can't take them in, uh, my example for this is uh, between Greece and Turkey, where refugees are coming in and then they send them over and they can't, they can't take them in, so they have to send them back. The Tuesday solution is the only way to create peace in the air, area rather than con continuing the conflict. The two-state solution will be the best and most viable solution to the conflict between Israel and Palestine. If peace and unity is not found soon, even more people will die. In the years 2000 to 2014, there has been 8,166 conflict-related deaths. Of that, 7,065 were Palestinian and 1,001 but 1,101 were Israeli. The conflict has made Palestinians 15 times more likely to be killed though the conflict through the conflict than the Israeli people. Using the two-state solution, we will see a decrease in deaths and a better place to live for the generations to come. In, the, in late 2016, the New York Times wrote that the Secretary of State John Kerry said that the two-state solution is the only way to achieve a just and lasting peace between the Israelis and Palestinians. If such a large official said this about the two-state solution, it shows how the solution has lots of potential, considering that the U.S. and the Israel are close allies. The two-state solution will allow Israel to retain a Jewish demographic majority, allowing the Zionist movement to be achieved. If one small part of the agreement goes wrong, it could result in conflict. So the solution needs to be dealt with carefully and thoroughly thought about. I want to leave this thought with you all. Hardships are a part of life and they'll come and come over again. But the good things can come with them if people fight for the peace and unity. This region has great challenges and great opportunities. But with some help from the government of the U.S. and other countries in the region, the, in the U.N., Israel and Palestine can be peaceful once again. Thank you. The conflict between Israel and Palestine is certainly and already getting out of hand. 116,000 lives have been lost. The conflict has been going on for nearly 160 years, and a solution needs to be figured out. And I think if we have learned anything, it's that whatever the solution is, it's not about making everyone happy. It's about making everyone safe. I believe that the one-state solution does the job. Yes, there will be problems with both um, but this is about how the problems would be handled. It creates a united state and avoids complicated issues such as displaced citizens and UN border resolutions. Many attempts have been made and most of these solutions were two state solutions. Most of these solutions struggle with solving the problems in Jerusalem and borders. Many families would be displaced and in a two state solution, this is inevitable. 
though, quote, though the two-state plan is clear in theory, the two sides are still deeply divided over how to make it work in practice. This quote is from a Vox article about the situation, and I believe that it shows the issues with the two-state solution. Sure, it may work in theory, but it certainly won't work if it can't work in practice. Like a game that initially seems like it will make sense, but it's just filled with confusing rules and contradictions. You can't live in peace without unity. In a one-state solution, unity is the primary goal. A united government, a united people, a united land. Under one state, I have collected, uh, under one state. I have collected one final quote from foreignaffairs.com. We should acknowledge the reality that there is and always will be one state between the river and sea and focus our efforts on making that state a viable home for all of the territory's inhabitants, Jews and Arabs alike.